Good evening. I'd like to call the general committee meeting to order. Would everyone please rise for the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather this evening and for the opportunity to do work on behalf of the children of this parish. Guide us in our decision making so that we may continue to put the needs of our students first. Help us to do the things necessary to continue to serve them and this community in a way that truly addresses their needs. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Ms. Lemoyne, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <clears throat> Roll call, please, Ms. Bote. Ms. Acevedo. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. Egan is not with us. Ms. Jackson. Here. Ms. Lemoyne. Here. Mr. England is not here. Ms. Dysar. Here. Mr. Long is not with us. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Warner. Here. And Ms. White. Here. Thank you, Ms. Bote. First item on the agenda is an education item. Ms. Lemoyne. Thank you, Ms. Dysar. Agenda item number four is a request for approval for the Head Start COLA increase spending plan. And we have Dr. Raviota with us this evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to come before you tonight. Last month, you recall that I came before you with our, uh, our Head Start continuation application, the, the yearly application that we have to submit to you, and you all gave your approval for that. As always seems to be the case, about two weeks after we come before you for that, the Office of Head Start gives us their COLA increase, and I have to come back to you and seek your approval for that. Now, the COLA increase for this year is just about what it was the last couple of years, $11,565. So the way that we look at that, our staff is paid on a salary schedule with step increases every year. And so we're not going to apply that to individuals uh, in Head Start like other more um, other agencies do we're going to ask you to apply those dollars toward our regular salaries and benefits for head start so that it will lessen the cost that the, the local district has to put in so what you have in front of you are the um is the uh the budget and the the breakdown of how we're using that those dollars and uh again it's sent in electronically and so a uh, very simple kind of procedure there um, we do not have to, um, to give any in-kind contributions on this one either. So, so do you have any questions for me? Okay, questions for Dr. Raviota? I, I just think it's worth noting um, that the salaries we pay our Head Start teachers are far in excess of what Head Start teachers are normally paid throughout the region because we have all certified teachers and pay them on our certificated scale. So they make more than head comparable Head Start teachers in other districts. Yes. Or in private, you know, because not all school systems run their Head Start programs. Right. right. Other questions or comments from the board? Ms. Soche, just a clarification on that for the public. So, but their, their schedule is reflective of all our other teachers in the yes. system, correct? They make what uh, regular K-12 teachers make. They're on the same salary scale. Okay, thank you. It also must, you know, should be noted that you know, all of our teachers, preschool teachers, are certified degree teachers. In a lot of agencies, um, the teachers may have an associate's degree or they may have a CDA. They don't have a a college degree for all of our preschool teachers have college degrees and are certified. Hey, Mr. I'll take Warner? a motion that we approve the Head Start COLA increase spending plan. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Warner, seconded by Ms. White. Any other further questions or comments? Okay. One other thing, Ms. Yes. Um, Lemoyne, we also received notice that um, we received, uh, just like we did last year, we received a one-time supplement from Head Start, a COVID-19 supplement uh, for $33,709 this year. And um, 
we have a lot of latitude in using that funds. Uh, last year, we used those funds to purchase Chromebooks, um, hotspots for the kids. Um, this year, you know, again, we're going to look at this. This is money for next year, so we'll take a look at where we are and what co what is the best use for those dollars. Um, it doesn't require board approval. The funding amounts can be moved within categories. So again, we'll take a look at that. Um, the board and, and policy council don't need to to, um, to give their approval, and, and no federal non-federal dollars or, or, or a match is also not required. So that's just for your information. I wanted to let you know that last year, you know, it came in handy as we were trying to prepare for what we were going to do at the beginning of the year. And again, th these dollars will come in handy for us as we as we move forward to next year. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Warner and a second by Ms. White. Any further questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lemoyne. Next item are the personnel changes. In your folder, you will see the personnel changes for April. And we have two retirements. One's Mr. Carey from Shumut High School. Gee whiz, Mr. Carey has been with us <laughs> a very long, time. very long time. He taught at uh, St. Bernard High and then moved over to Shumut High at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to wish Ms. Uh, William Carey from Shumut High School a very happy retirement and thank you for, so, for your so many years of service to the students of this district. Um, and uh, he has to be close to 40, huh? Okay. I don't know, but it's, you know, so the older I get, it, th these are young people. Yeah. These are young people retiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, happy retirement, Mr. Carey. And then also we have uh, Donna Aceveda, who's also retiring, and um, who's a paraeducator. And we want to thank Donna for her many years of um, service to the students of St. Bernard Parish also. And happy retirement to you, Donna. Are there any other que are there any questions or comments? Okay. There being none, we'll move on to the next item, which is a finance item. Mr. Warner. Thank you, Mrs. Dysart. Item number six is the 2021 revised general fund and special revenue budgets. And I believe Mr. Fernandez is here. You believe correctly. Okay, uh, in your packets is the revised budget for, as Ms. Warner said, General Fund and Special Revenue Funds. Uh, there are five exhibits following the uh, letter. Uh, the first two, uh, the first one is a summary of revenues and expenditures and expected ending fund balances for the General Fund. Exhibits two and three, respectively, are the revenues and expenditures budgets, line item detail. Exhibit four is the lunch fund budget and estimated changes. And exhibit five is special revenue funds, which is just the current amounts of those, the final allocation amounts for those grants. And uh, basically it's pretty straightforward. Uh, in the general fund, we just made a few adjustments. We adjusted some revenues. We increased ad valorem tax collections and sales tax collections uh, based on the trends for those tax collections uh, to date. That's what we anticipate will be the uh, amount we're going to collect through the end of the year. We also increased the MFP, allocate, uh, MFP budgeted amount to reflect the final MFP allocation after the mid-year adjustments have been made. And there was an increase in that as well. And on the expenditure side, of course, we've increased the salary and benefits categories to reflect the uh, stipends that the board granted to all the employees uh, recently. So those amounts are reflected in there as well, the increase in those categories. And a few other minor adjustments as well to some other categories in there. The lunch fund budget basically adjusts also for the salary supplements that were granted by the board. And uh, that budget 
reflects that. Also some adjustments to revenues based on what we're seeing as the current trends. And finally, the special revenue funds budgets are just exhibiting the final allocations that we received from the Louisiana Department of Education and the different federal agencies for the different grants, uh, the different major grants that we have that we're required to adopt budgets for. And uh, that's it. I'm going to uh, answer any questions you might have. All right. I want to take a minute to look at it, guys. Are you all ready to discuss it? This is Dysart. Okay. Mr. Fernandez, the increase on the MFP, um, was that due to um, an expected increase in it's teachers? No, that's due to Unexpected, mainly enrollment. I mean, that's an, inc an increase in enrollment. We had two increases in October and February counts, which are the two main counts, the October 1st count and the February 1st count, mm -hmm. or the two counts that they use to determine whether you're going to get an adjustment in the RFP. We had increases on both of those counts. So our uh, allocation went up based on increases for that. And there were a couple other adjustments to some other allocations they have within the MFP as well. Okay. And, and just a comment on the 16 section land fund interest. Yes. That is um, that, that significantly is. decreased in, in the past years. Well, 16 section, well, there's, there's, there's two 16 section land revenues mm -hmm. that we've gotten in the past. One is the 16 section fund interest, which is that $79, which we, which we have gotten ever since I've been working here. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was done. Yeah. It's, it's called and the it's, old red and black fund. Right, so we get $79 every it. year from that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then there's revenues from 16 section land. That's when we lease out the lands, and we haven't had any leases right. lately. So, so we have no revenue from 16. Yeah, that's what you're. Land. That's probably what you're thinking about. Yes. Is in the past when we leased properties, we had revenue from that, but we haven't had that in a while. Right. Yeah, just remember it would um, was some source of um, yeah. <laughs> revenue in years well, since past. The, yeah, since the oil industry has curtailed and yeah. cut back, they're not drilling and they're not uh, exploring anymore, so, well, so much so. We haven't had requests to lease any of our properties in quite mm -hmm. some time. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Smith. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, general fund and special revenue fund budgets. All right, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Smith, a second by Mrs. Lemoyne. Is there any other further discussion? Mrs. Voce. I, I just want to make a comment um, just to remind everyone that in order to make room and to have the money to pay the supplements out of the general fund, which are embedded in these expenditures, Mr. Fernandez has had moved the commensurate amount of expenses out of the general fund that were eligible to be covered from the federal funding that we're getting from the federal government. So what you see here is uh, some expenses taken out of the general fund and moved into the federal funding allowance uh, for the allowable COVID related costs, which gave us the, the room to go ahead and grant the supplements through the general fund. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boche. Yeah, Mr. Fernandez, I mean, uh, our projected balance is up. Our revenues seem to be up. I know our expense side of the equation has been up due to the, the pandemic, but yes. the budget is solid. So uh, Yes, we're, uh, we're confident that, you know, and happy with it. Very good. So um, we have a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. So we'll move on to item number seven. Request to approve the St. Bernard roof bid tabulation. Okay, also in your package you have a tabulation of bids. We had three companies that had put in bids and the bids were very close. They were in the same range or 
uh, a close range, but the winning bid and the one we're recommending that the board accept is from certified roofing and sheet metal for an amount of $1,697,101. And that's the full replacement of the roof at St. Bernard Middle School. All right, so bid tabulations are in. Any discussion from the board on that? Ms. Mrs. Dysart. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Um, had we uh, done any, had any work from um, this um, vendor, certified roofing? Uh, we haven't done work with that company, but the, the principals of that company have done work with us in the past. Okay. They came, they had another company and they formed this new company. So we have dealt with the principles of this Thank organization. You. And on that note, I'll make the motion that we go with certified roofing and sheet metal, which is the lowest bid. I have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Dysart, seconded by Ms. Jackson. Did you have a question, Ms. Jackson? No. Okay. Is there any other discussion? I have a question. Yes, sir. I just wanted to know, Mr. Fernandez, is that just replacing um, the roof on the school? Or is that the school and the gym? Is that all? It's the school, the gym, and the cafeteria. Good. They're going to do a major replacement and some repairs as well. Good. Some of that. Okay. And the funding, why don't you talk a little bit about FEMA and the funding source uh, for the this? Funding, the funding source will be insurance proceeds of which the insurance company agreed that uh, the entire roof has to be replaced. So they will be funding the bulk of it and the difference, the deductible amount will be funded through payment. All right. Any other questions? Motion on the floor. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. We'll move on to item number eight, request to approve the bid tabulation for milk, milk products for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Hello, good Hello evening. There. How are you, Mrs. Bloom? I am fine, thank you. Great. This is a yearly bid um, that we put out for milk, <coughs> our milk, and um, if you look at the second page, we had three vendors bid, mm -hmm. the second page, reflects the prices that were bid and the third page of your packet is how we calculate the bid award for the milk because everything's not equal in milk we don't always use as much orange juice and whole milk gallons as we do like the cartons of milk so we value it and of course we tell the vendors this in the um, conditions of the bid so they know what they're bidding on and that's how we we come to the you know calculation because we have one we choose to have one vendor so it's an all or nothing bid you know we don't want to have maybe different vendors for different products and so that's that's what we do for the milk all right do we have any uh discussion from the board by Mr. Smith to approve the bid tabulations for milk and milk products. Seconded by Mrs. Lemoyne. Any other comments? Any other discussion? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, we'll move on to item number nine. Request to approve the bid tabulation for bread and bread products right. for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Right. This is a yearly bid for our bread products. We had four vendors participate. And of the four, we, um, this is a line by line bid. And that's the company that won. Right, Mr. 
on and make a motion and we accept the tabulation for the board. Motion by Mr. Smith. So. Seconded by Mr. Campbell. Any discussion? Uh, just clarification, that is to go with the lowest bid on each? Yes. Right. Those, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? I right, have a motion on the floor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. And we'll move on to item number 10. <laughs> Okay. Request to approve the bid tabulation for groceries for July 1st, 2021 mm -hmm. through December 31st, 2021. Groceries, Mrs. Bloom. Yes, this is a six month bid from July to December. And it is, um, we had three vendors for our, who participated in our bid process and the tabulations do reflect the lowest bidder um, as long in respect to the bid conditions and specifications. So the, for each item, this is a line item, and each vendor can win, you know, each item. But it is a, it is a low bid. It's by price. Price is the primary reason that we choose yeah. for our specifications. And I see the different vendors are listed under the lowest bidder on the each one. Yes, item. that's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Motion by Mr. Smith, go with the lowest bidder for our groceries. All in, uh, do we have a second? Second by Mrs. Acevedo. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Okay. I'll throw it back to you, Mrs. Dysart. Thank you, Mr. Warner, and thank you, Ms. Bloom, to you and all the, the cafeteria ladies who continue to do an excellent job. We appreciate it. Okay, next item was superintendent's recommendations. Ms. Doche? Um, just an acknowledgement that, well, I guess we're in the home stretch for the end of the school year. It's about six weeks left. But um, we're getting in heavily into the testing season. So I think we're going to begin statewide assessment on the 28th which will be that last week in April, and we will have some form of state assessment all the way through the end of the school year for different grade levels and different modes of testing, some computerized, some paper and pencil, depending upon the grade level, and especially for the high school students, um, and of course testing, which will determine graduation, because they have to pass these exams in order to graduate from high school. And then we'll be into the graduation season and then go smoothly into our summer session in June where we will have uh, our regular summer school, summer skills session, um, elementary, middle, and high school. We're going to have some form of the performing arts uh, program this summer. It will not be a major production per se like we're normally used to, but we're going to do some vocal and instrumental music with children who show an interest in that um, in that month of June as well. And uh, Ms. Acevedo will run a STEM science summer camp program the first two weeks in June for interested people and interested students and that information is going out. So we anticipate a very uh, busy, busy June for our students in the different summer programs that we will be offering. Thank you, Ms. Voce. Ms. Voce, could we get an, um, an update of the, um, at the next meeting, at the regular meeting, on the um, end of the year recognitions and um, activities that we will be having. I know a lot of people are asking about um, the end of year programs and of course everyone wants to celebrate somewhat and um, so if we could get uh, an update at the next meeting we'd appreciate okay. it. Certainly. Okay, thank you. Mr. Campbell? I think is there an, an award ceremony Monday at Chalmette High? 
this coming Monday. I'm not, to be honest, uh, I'm not certain. My daughter called me and told me about it, so. Well, you may have more advance notice than I do, Mr. Campbell, so it might be. <laughs> I'm telling I'm sorry. you. Sorry. I know I don't have my calendar with me, so I'm not. I'm not quite sure at the moment. But I do know that. Um, I don't know. It might be a little bit early for that, like is the senior it? award it's ceremony. Miss Janik is yeah. there. What What is Monday night, Miss Janik? Do you know? Senior award night. So okay. senior award night Monday night. So Mr. Campbell. I guess that's in the, the start gym. of the season. Uh, 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. in the gym. In the gym, 6 p.m. Okay. So each of the schools will have their different. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Mm -hmm. You must have an honoree, Mr. Campbell. Congratulations. <laughs> I would think on that award ceremony. Would, would your grandson be part of that? Yes. <laughs> I think so. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, Mr. Warner. Yeah, I just wanted to um, point out that uh, I know the legislature uh, went in a session, I think yesterday. One of their biggest ag agenda items is fiscal reform. And I think that's something we have to be aware of and cognizant of as far as our uh, revenue streams. You know, they keep saying it's gonna be revenue neutral, it's gonna be revenue neutral. But um, it gets, always gets me a little nervous. We just did our budget tonight um, to, to make sure our revenue streams that we have at the local level stay the same and are all revenue neutral. So just making everybody aware of that. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Great point. Do you want to say anything on that, Mr. Chair? Nothing. I, as Mr. Warner said, I think we have to keep a close eye on some of the legislation that's being proposed I do know that as each year, and this is one piece of legislation that I think we need to contact our representatives about, there's always this public school choice bill that, it, that comes to the forefront, which would allow students from other parishes, other school, other parishes in Louisiana to come into our schools if they are currently attending a DRNF school. And we have fought against that piece of legislation each year, yet it's being proposed again this year. So I would hope that we would make it known to our representatives that uh, the people of St. Bernard have been willing to fund public education and have always been generous in funding public education in St. Bernard Parish, but for St. Bernard Parish residents. And. Uh, I would hope that it would remain that way so we would not have to uh, anticipate accepting students who do not live in St. Bernard. The only students that we do accept who do not live in St. Bernard are the children of our employees. We allow to bring them into our schools if they're teaching or working in our school system. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fote. Anyone else? Okay, there being no other Move, business. We adjourn. There's a motion by Mr. Campbell, seconded by Ms. Acevedo. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and good night.